This is a Rosemary Segmental production from the Wired Up TV team. <laughs> How's it going, my people? How's it going, mi gente? Welcome to another episode of Wired Up TV. Hope you guys have your hands on the steering wheel and keeping your eyes on the road, handling all your businesses, no matter what it is, family issues, issues at work, issues at school, uh, anything you guys got to tackle, tackle that shit and get it over with today. Because if you wait till tomorrow, you're going to be a hoarder and what did I tell you guys about hoarding, man? You can, it's just like hoarding clothes and hoarding shit in your house. The more you hoard, the more problems you're going to have in your life. Same thing. The more you hoard at home, the more bunches of dirt. and just, Bro, you're, gonna have, you're just going to have to clean longer. So stop it. Handle whatever you got to handle today right now. Don't leave anything that you can handle today for tomorrow. I know you guys have heard that. But, you know, it's time to apply that to our regular life. Because I know we might, we might know it, but we don't do it. Right? We might know it, but we don't show it. I know you guys have heard that. So come on, guys. Let's hop on that. Let's, you know, let's handle our business, pay our bills. Let's take care of our kids. Let's shine, man. Let's get out the that fucking three-strike rule they got us in and get up out of the hood and make a better life for our kids. Even if we didn't have it, doesn't mean we can't give it to our kids. So we have to get up out of that and, you know, no matter what. And one of the biggest problems is procrastination. Leaving what you can do today for tomorrow. So, tackle your problems, guys, please. And if you got any, if you don't got anybody to talk to, you need anybody to talk to, you can always count on your boy and on all the Wired Up TV family, my people. All right, you guys know how to get in contact with us. Wired Up TV for you at gmail.com. Wired Up TV for you at gmail.com. Chop it up about anything, guys. It doesn't have to necessarily be about Tupac or music. Be about anything, y'all. Keep your heads up and stay up. Now, Tupac Shakur was born the same parish crooks. He was born in East Harlem on June 16, 1971. To the parents of a Black Panther of a you know he was born to parents that were in the Black Panther Party. They were revolutionary socialists. And of course they were a very organized organization. I know you guys know who they are. If you don't know specifically who they are, you know you could always Google them. Um, they were an organization that were in, in various cities of, of the United States of America uh, that the government tried to stop uh, for one reason or another. They were afraid of them. They tried to, uh, you know, destroy them from within, put them in jail. Anything they can do to them, they tried to destroy them. Okay, so please, guys, research the Black Panther Party. Okay. Later in 1972. Uh, the the name of the of the same parish crooks was changed. Okay. His mother changed his name to Tupac Amaru Shakur after an an 18th century Peru, Peruvian revolutionary who was killed by the Spanish. Okay. Tupac later took his surname from his sister Setua and Moprim. Okay, from from a father, from the father stepfather that had married. His mother of Fini Shakur, okay, which was Matu Shakur was a panther, okay. He was a Black Panther as well. He was there mostly through uh, through all of Tupac's childhood because his original father, his birth father, uh, Billy Garland, was not. He was absentee, okay. He was not there for Tupac. I believe he stopped being there for Tupac when he was seven years old. Or around that time, okay. All right. So, I want you guys to hear a little piece of what he actually said when he, you know, allegedly, supposedly allegedly heard that his son had was shot in Vegas. All right. Take a close listen to this. Stuff also can take away from their creativity. Last time I saw my son Tupac was in a hospital bed in Las Vegas, Nevada. I just gotten off the plane and after I greeted everybody in the wait emergency room. And when I walked through the doors, I, I saw something that resembled my son, but really didn't look like my son the last time I saw him. So that was Billy Gardens, Tupac's blood 
father, not Matulu, which is his stepfather, his blood father. Okay, said when he saw Tupac in Vegas, that's how he saw him. Okay, Tupac's not dead, y'all. Now, Tupac Shakur received, you know, his name as his identity, you know, as, as, uh, for when he entered the music industry. Uh, to do this, his mother, uh, his mother's criminal background as a Black Panther activist, she knew from uh, from the beginning that her son's life was in danger. So she decided to change his name right after birth. So uh, she knew that her son was going to shine. She can tell by his eyes, but by the glow. You can tell when somebody is going to be immortal, famous, just big. I'm pretty sure you guys know what I'm talking about. There's something unexplainable, something you can see in an eye. And imagine a mother, how she could tell. Okay? Now, Tupac's mother also thought his name fit him right due to his gifted talent and revolutionary pedigree. Okay, Afini knew he would become a revolutionary soldier. Tupac would always speak uh, up to his beliefs and, 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 and he fought for the truth and justice against anyone and everything. So Tupac was very strong, very political, and his mom knew he would be a soldier. Tupac was aware of all the danger that the politicians and the police and the CIA and the government and, you know, and he knew. That, that they were watching him. You can hear this in his music. You can hear this in his interviews. You can see it in his eyes and his videos. You know what I'm saying? Tupac was telling us that he knew that they were watching him. Just because we could not see it didn't mean it wasn't there. Tupac knew it was there. And he knew that they were watching him from the beginning. And his mom told him this too. His stepfather told him this too. Some of his friends around him that can see it told him this too. Okay, you gotta remember, this man was speaking against police. He was telling you, stop killing your, your black or brown brothers and sisters that live in your hood, that grew up with you, that live next to you, they are just as poor and oppressed as you. And kill the motherfucking cop that's breaking up your whole fucking families, that's beating up our brothers and sisters in the fucking street, that's locking us up. That's keeping us from earning a fucking check. Fuck the government. That's keeping us locked in this little fucking every day, go to work, pay taxes, come home, and never be able to make it out and enjoy your life. You pay taxes your whole fucking life, and you're a slave to them. Okay, you make them rich. They can enjoy your life while you slave for them. He was trying to tell you this, and I'm telling you this, brothers and sisters. Stop being a slave to this motherfucking country. America eats its children. Be strong. Be independent and realize that you're a slave. Hustle. And don't think that every little wrong you do is wrong. Hell nah. Keep your fucking head up with a smile. And do whatever you gotta do to feed your fucking kids. And excuse my language, ladies and gentlemen. But I'm passionate about this shit. Because we're talking about Tupac right now. He began to get clues. So he began to think that he needed, you know, a way out. He began to unravel his mind and he began thinking. He also wrote his lyrics and music as, you know, as well as reading books and planned his escape. You can hear it all over his music, the way he was thinking. Though he loved what he was doing in the music industry as well as all the things that he was doing for the community and the ghettos of America all over the world and you know and also you know even though he was going to miss uh, his fans and stuff like that but he didn't trust the some people that much he lost a lot of that trust after the people he fought he fought for shot him after women he cheered for and didn't care if people laughed at him because he was soft and singing songs for the females. And he's supposed to be this gangster revolution. He didn't care about that. When they accused him of rape, that broke this man's heart. And it filled the fire in his heart. And he told you this. When little kids were writing him letters in prison telling him, I'm so sorry that you got raped in jail because his enemies was putting this bullshit out. That lit the flame that can never be put out. 
So with the help of some friends and his relatives, he planned his escape. Staged. <laughs> Remembering the night of Las Vegas, the night of the shooting. <laughs> Trayvon Lane shook Knight's homeboy whispered in Tupac's ear. Hey Pac, it's time for the plot, my brother. Have we ever thought why should never ask his homeboy what he whispered in Tupac's ear? Why didn't he ever want to cooperate with the cops on solving his homeboy's supposed murder? His answer would always be no. He would never tell, even if he knew who tried to kill him. Because that's not my job, he would always say. Should Knight will go to jail for covering up for his little brother. So there would be no point. And of course also because Tupac ain't dead, Tupac's alive. Just like Tupac left his clues in most of his songs. <laughs> Oh, man. Now, Orlando Anderson never testified against Shit Knight on the beating in Las Vegas, even though they had their own differences. You know, Shit didn't like the fact that Orlando was being protected by the CIA. Damn, Orlando. You were protected by the CIA, man? I thought you were a gangster. Ah, man. Fucking Orlando. Son of a... Oh, oh. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, but Suge, uh, he did respect the fact, you know, that Anderson helped him out, because that's pretty cool. Fucking Orlando, man, I still can't believe this motherfucker is a cop, man. But, uh, I'm sorry, guys. I just, uh, I hate cops, you know what I'm saying? Look how I sound. <laughs> the cops hear me, man, that's automatically, you know... I'm gonna, I'm gonna get arrested. Anyways, in closing, the CIA claims they don't know Tupac's whereabouts because they are embarrassed, ashamed, that Tupac pulled the wool over their miserable eyes and escaped with his life. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, fucking Marlboros. God damn it, man. Somebody give me some water. I'll talk to you guys later. Alrighty. We'll talk to you later, man. Thank you for that. Guys, we've told you the story of Mr. Tupac Shakur. But the story is not over, man. You guys got to stay tuned for what's coming next. Tupac left a lot of things open and a lot of doors to be explored. Who's going to explore them? If you ask me, man, it's going to be us. You guys keep your mind on what you guys doing. Keep your mind on everything you guys have it set on. Don't go astray. Don't give a fuck about who laughs at you, about what they tell you, or about how they judge you. Keep on keeping on. And like I always tell you guys, always stay wired up, my people. Peace out.